वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू स्टडी एक्यूमेरिया फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रशांत मावानी आई होप यू ऑल आर इन गुड टूडे इज ट्वेंटी सेकेंड जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट टूडे इज अ डिस्कशन विद दिस कोट बाय मार्कस ओरेलियस द सोल बिकम्स डाइड विद द कलर ऑफ इट्स थाट्स माई क्वेश्चन टू यू गाइज एंड आई हाईली रिकन यू गाइज टू मेडिटेट ऑन दिस आई वॉन्ट यू गाइज टू थिंक अबाउट दिस कोट माई क्वेश्चन इज what colors are you using to paint your soul think about it with this dear friends study aq team has designed a smart course so this smart course is for civil services examination it covers your pre as well as mains examination and to find out more about it all you have to do is download our mobile application to download the pdf of today's lecture check out my telegram channel you can follow me on facebook please make sure that you share this lecture with other students hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel dear friends on our table we have six important articles and then we are going to go through some news items i would like to start today's discussion with this article it's on uae's first mission to march successfully launched from japan the name of this mission is hope you can call it hope in english in arabic it is called al amal or al amal the spacecraft blasted off from a japan's uh, uh, tanegashima space center the question is why not isro's platform anyway um, if they have uh, uh, you know if they think japan is the best uh, launch pad then you know it's it's their choice i'm just uh, saying this thing from my point of view now the most important thing is uh, its objective the objective of this hope or this uae's mission to mars that is hope is to build the first full picture of mars climate uh, throughout the martian air Now I want you guys to do a little bit of research on Martian air. I have one question for you. The question number one is: How many days does it take for this Mars planet to have a full uh, circle, or you can say a revolution around uh, the sun? So basically, how many days in one Martian air? This is your question. Question number two is: What about day and night? Right? Uh, how long is a day on Mars? This is your question number two. The reason I'm asking you guys to do a little bit of research on this thing is because, as far as Mars climate is concerned, see, we are sending. When I say we, I'm talking about human beings. We are sending missions uh, on uh, to Mars to know more about it. But we know already. We already know uh, year as well as day. So there are chances that. in your upcoming prelims uh, they can ask you one this simple question about martian air as well as day and night or the length of, uh, length of the day as well as moon if there are any around mars so because this mars is uh, part of current affairs uh, and it's going to be part of current affairs this year because we are going to see one more launch from china then uh, that will be followed by usa so it is important that you collect a little bit of or you upgrade yourself or update yourself with important information about mars it will take uh, what 30 minutes only maximum 30 minutes for you guys to go through the things that we have found when i say we i'm talking about india right mangalyaan 10 minutes do a little bit research on this thing uh, this ua is hope and that's it you are done and then when you find uh, china's mission in news or later on when you find uh, news about uh, U- usa's mission then you can add things to that page or paper that you have an, uh, used to, to create some notes about mars now the most interesting thing here and this hope is not just a hope for uae it is also a big hope as well as opportunity for india as well i'll explain it to you why the thing is uae wants this mission to catalyze growth in its stem sector stem that is science technology engineering mathematics etc so when it comes to technical things uh, this nations they have money because they have made money out of oil so they have money but they know this thing for sure that a day will come when uh, this money or this uh, they will not get any money from oil because more and more renewable options are coming up uh, we know the side effect of using too much of fossil fuel so 
this nations they are going to use uh, when i said this i'm talking about this whole nations here like gulf cooperation council countries that you can see on your screen so you have uh, saudi arabia oman uae uh, qatar uh, fifth one is going to be this uh, bahrain this is a very tiny island nation here and the sixth one is going to be this one kuwait so this six countries are part of this gulf cooperation council and uh, then you have other countries like uh, Yemen is here, you have Iran, oil producing country, Iraq is an oil producing country. So overall these nations, uh, they know this thing that uh, they have made a huge amount of money from this natural resource, but it's not going to last that long. A day will come when they have to diversify, they have to switch, uh, they have to switch over to other sources of income. So this is one of the main reasons why they want to, these nations, they want to upgrade their human capital. People so far, uh, means if you go through, means they have this natural resources. So, so far their life has been very easy, right? The government used to provide them free petrol and so many other things uh, they used to get. But now uh, they have to, means of course, uh, the youngsters are also interested in learning more things. And the UAE and other countries, they are investing huge amount of money in building universities. Um, if, if, if those subjects are not available in their countries, then these nations are sending their kids as well as youngsters to various different universities of the world. They are fully funded and things like that. So these nations are interested in developing IT sector, green energy, artificial intelligence, a fourth industrial revolution. And guess what? India is a country that is famous for IT as well as space technology. We have good relationship with the UAE as well as all the nations of uh, this Gulf Cooperation Council. And not just Gulf Cooperation Council, we have good relationship with all the nations that you find here. At present, uh, Iran is a nation that is not that much happy with it, but our relationship is uh, quite uh, strong, uh, you know. This happens with every nation, right? Uh, the relationship is like frequency. It goes up and down. It keeps on. So we have to work. Both sides uh, have to work to make sure that we uh, remain most of the time in, 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 you know, at our peaks rather than our lows. So this nations, that means Iran is a country that is, uh, you know, technologically very advanced, uh, as you know, that they have developed so many things uh, all by themselves. So this nations, this Gulf nations uh, would like to compete and they would like to beat Iran and uh, India can play. I means we don't want to enter into their uh, Gulf games or this power game that we find in Gulf. But what we can do is uh, we are good in services. So we can send our best people over there and uh, these people will find good jobs, white color jobs over there and highly paid jobs over there and uh, this will be a mutual uh, mutually beneficial uh, relationship uh, for isn't it uh, so they it will be win-win situation for both parties so this is the reason why i'm saying that this is a big opportunity for india because now the field is open right uh, we can means our people if they are finding difficulties in entering USA, then we have other options as well, uh, these nations here. But they have to be a bit more uh, liberal, right? Uh, there are, you know, stringent rules and regulations. And this is the reason why so many people, they don't prefer to go to these nations. It's uh, They have money and everything, but you don't find that much freedom over there. Moving on, moving on to next item, sailing into a new future. Now, on your screen, you can see this uh, black and white uh, photo or image of a naval ship, it's an aircraft carrier of USA, the name is USS Enterprise. Now, dear friends, uh, I'm sure you are aware about the facts associated with 1971 war between India and Pakistan. It was about uh, uh, liberation of Bangladesh, uh, India won this war. And at that point of time, back in 1971, USA was a good friend of Pakistan. I'm not sure how many of you are aware about this thing, but USA was a very good uh, friend and Al Pakistan was USA's ally. But if you see today, things have changed. Uh, things have changed drastically. USA and India, we have very good relationship with each other at present. And we can find an, a new chapter in geopolitics is getting written in Washington, in New Delhi, as well as Beijing. The reason is that uh, on your screen, 
this is one of the world's at present the biggest aircraft carrier in the world it's called uh, USS uh, Nimitz and uh, this Nimitz uh, was found in Bay of Bengal all of the sudden unscheduled exercise took place between USA and Indian naval ships uh, we did joint military exercise and this is a clear signal to Beijing clear signal to China that uh, if you try to bully India then you are not going to make India weak you are not going to make India cry you are not going to see India on its knees right uh, if you do something if you misbehave with India then India will get more and more stronger US defense secretary Mark Esper has said that don't underestimate the strength of free democracies this was a clear message to China so this is a big thing when you find uh, one of the world's biggest aircraft carrier in Bay of Bengal and uh, Indian naval ship as well as uh, USA's naval ships uh, together if they are doing joint military exercise then this is a big warning red flag for China at the same time when it comes to it's not just about defense but when we see government to government relationship then uh, USA's House of Representatives on Monday they have passed an amendment uh, unanimously uh, and the name is uh, National Defense Authorization Act decrying Chinese incursion in the Galwan Valley of Ladakh and growing territorial assertiveness. China has only succeeded in formalizing India's strategic ties with US into a mutually beneficial military relationship. China's misbehavior has in fact added more more teeth and tail or you can say it has added more uh, strength um, to India's arsenal and uh, this hope of Asian century India for a very long period of time India used to believe in this Asian century that 21st century is going to be Asian century in which you have to find two growth engines of the world one is China one is India but uh, there are so many reasons why China is not ready to see another nation. Uh, China knows this thing that India is a democratic country. Most of the uh, world is democratic at present and uh, more and more countries are heading towards democracy. More and more people are demanding democracies. So, democratic, uh, democratic system. So, when India will grow, it will have good friends. It will become good friends with uh, Australia with USA with uh, European nations right so many African countries uh, so many ASEAN nations so this is just one example China was is not able to digest this fact that in long term India will beat China so it is doing everything possible to create hurdles for India and it is trying to sabotage uh, or jeopardize this India's growth as well as development but they this China has destroyed by attacking us by uh, you know um, grabbing our territory or trying to grab our territory China has uh, destroyed this uh, Asian uh, century let me tell you one thing that uh, I'm, I'm sure you have experienced this thing uh, there are if you are working let's say then uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd be aware about this thing that there are companies uh, or jobs or career like if you are working in a company then your relationship can be very formal you do your job you get your salary that's it right you don't don't get involved emotionally with that uh, company or people uh, with whom you are working the second is uh, you have good relationship uh, you don't get that much money maybe or maybe the pay is also good but uh, your rel relationship is not just uh, limited to work you are uh, you know with your heart and mind uh, joined with or uh, what do we say uh, synced with that uh, company in which you are working or your workplace and the third could be a mix of both uh, professional as well as a uh, good cordial relationship when it comes to India and China's relationship let's say when it comes to India and Bhutan's relationship it's not that much money but it's heart to heart when it comes to India and Japan's relationship, it is both professional as well as personal or heart to heart as well as uh, professional relationship. But when it comes to China, our relationship was more about uh, being very professional. You know, we buy things, we sell things and that's it. When it comes to a few areas, yes, we were on the same page. But uh, overall, 
uh, we are not uh, cordial friends we are competitors right and it all started with them we have not started this uh, competition they started that thing and of course now india is not going to step back foreign minister s j shankar has said that india has to shed its caution and step out confidently to articulate uh, to articulate its interests so far india was a bit cautious uh, india was not uh, what do we say in cricket uh, front foot batting right india was not uh, doing aggressive batting india was taking just to single runs but now india is ready to go for those uh, sixes and uh, fours so that's what the foreign minister is trying to say here in his statement moving on to the third topic it's about covid vaccine soon this one is from tribune and it's a sort of uh, a ray of hope for the whole world Oxford University's coronavirus vaccine initial phase 3 trials of humans uh, showing positive results is very optimistic it is very encouraging it is very uh, you know it's like a ray of hope for the whole world uh, even if one company even if one university even if one research lab can bring out a medicine or a vaccine for this covid-19 then that is a victory of each and every human being on this planet isn't it optimism held this way as 23 vaccines more were reported to be ready for human trials that's a good thing and we have 140 other vaccine candidates lined up not too far behind so the whole world the whole humanity is praying as well as working Uh, to beat this covid-19 both the healthy as well as the infected have signed up for trials in a valiant bid to defeat the raging coronavirus uh, that has uh, since late 2019 now pay attention here since late 2019 so as per various different reports uh, this whole coronavirus thing started back in november 2019 in china Uh, but the who as well as china they claim that uh, it all started uh, in the first week of or the last week of uh, december 2019 and first week of january 2020 but so many reports they say that it all started so here the thing is uh, this uh, statement uh, directly indirectly also says that china was well aware uh, well aware about this uh, coronavirus and uh, in its it's uh, uh, it's this contagious nature of this uh, virus but then as well it was quiet and uh, it kept the world in the dark and this is uh, this is uh, the biggest uh, mistake of china right uh, there are so many countries there are so many people they don't trust china anymore is because of uh, this sort of things anyway moving on uh, so far this virus has uh, infected uh, 1 crore 45 lakh people and it has killed more than 6 lakh people on display what we find here when i say on display i'm talking about 23 vaccine more vaccines uh, candidates are, uh, are are going to start human trials 140 other vaccines are lined up to, uh, not too far behind this uh, 23 vaccines and we can see good result of this oxford university's vaccine all these things uh, display marvel of science as well as a human endeavor remember a few days ago when we were discussing this topic i told you one thing the biggest cure is not the vaccine the biggest cure is not that medicine the biggest cure is human endeavor right and this is the biggest thing so far we are here because of human endeavor so this is the biggest uh, vaccine and i'm sure we will find something we will find a solution or for, you know to to hunt this or to eliminate this uh, covid-19 the good thing is that uh, the oxford vaccine uh, it 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 safely uh, you know it was it has been designed to safely protect a person from virus by pr- uh, prompting an immune response in the body by making antibodies and t cells good thing about india here again is that oxford has partnered with the pune based serum institute of technology for making the vaccine so if this vaccine is uh, good enough right if the final trial tells us that uh, this vaccine is the solution it is the magic cure then india is going to benefit out of it because we are the partner in we, we are going to make this vaccine here in our country not just one it's not that india is the only country but india is also a partner of oxford so we are going to get this medicine and we are going to produce it for the world as well so we will play a very important role uh, once this uh, m- vaccine gets a green signal 
a cautious optimism. Never before have candidate vaccines been developed from scratch, tested on animals, and completed early stages of human clinical trials all in six months' time. The reason I I do agree that uh, this is, uh, you know, we have bypassed a few things and um, normally it takes uh, ages, but uh, the speed is extraordinary here because we are in a very extraordinary uh, circumstance, isn't it? The whole world. If you see Ebola vaccine, it took time, H1N1, and if you go through this one as well, this SARS and MERS, they are also, uh, you know, it's, uh, they, they have, they, it's part of this coronavirus family. So it took a bit of time, but here uh, we have bypassed a few things, uh, no doubt. But we have to be very sure that we have to make sure this thing that we don't bypass critical steps, right? Uh, it's very important because if uh, this vaccine will kill this uh, COVID-19 or this coronavirus and after a few months time, if you find that uh, you have issues with your liver or maybe digestive system or maybe your eyes or maybe your nerve system or maybe your kidneys, then th we don't need this sort of vaccine, isn't it? So safety is a very important thing uh, but still so far things have been good but we have to just keep in mind that the critical steps are not bypassed on the loose this one is about issue going on between governor of west bengal jagdeep dhankar and the chief minister mamta Banerjee. now jagdeep dhankar the governor he met uh, home minister amit shah and he briefed him about uh, this, uh, um, you know, the things that are going wrong in West Bengal. And uh, he said that before meeting, he said that uh, he was doing, he was just doing his duty because as per Article 159, his duty is to preserve, protect and defend the Constitution. No doubt, uh, the governor's duty is to defend, protect and preserve a uh, Constitution. But the thing is, and this is a reality, right, governor? Governor's post is definitely a constitutional post, but the problem is that uh, the way people are appointed, uh, the president appoints a governor and uh, this president works on the aid and advice of prime minister as well as council of ministers. So basically, the ruling party will decide who will become governor of which state. How it works is uh, there are so many people in various different political parties like say for example at present we have BJP ruling at central government so there are so many leaders of BJP they have worked for the party from their very young age now they are in their 60s and 70s and uh, you know they, they are not ministers they are not MLAs so to just say them thank you and I'm being very practical here this is how it works that you have given your whole life uh, for this party so now we will make you governor so this is how it works this is a dark reality. If you like it or not, this is how it works. See, Lieutenant Governor of uh, uh, Puducherry. And just not that. If you go through each and every governor, then you will find that they have an inclination towards uh, a ruling party at uh, central government. Okay. Now, Mr. Dhankar had ended up uh, in confrontations with uh, vice chancellors, uh, students, uh, Trinamool Congress leaders, and uh, he has to remember that he is not an opposition p politician in West Bengal. He is governor. He is about all this party politics and everything. Now, Miss Banerjee is also a combative politician. You know it very well. Like uh, she is not that easy. Uh, she is. I'm not saying when she is not a easy. That does not mean that uh, she is uh, bad. Right? Uh, she is aggressive. Uh, she knows her job. She knows her people, and in you know it's been. Ms. BJP has tried to conquer this West Bengal, uh, but she is giving a very tough fight. Now election is going to take place in a year's time, so all this aggressiveness that we find this uh, governor versus chief minister, the whole situation is because of this election that is just around the corner. So I think uh, they have started their preparation. Now, uh, let's see how it goes on, right? I'm not sure about uh, what will happen next uh, because it, it's you can never you never know. But one thing is that uh, that politics in West Bengal is a bit aggressive. So many means when I say aggressive, I mean to say that political party people fighting with each other, beating each other. This is something very 
uh, not that much uh, you know this is a bit common thing uh, over there as far as i know moving on to next item towards uh, robust uh, data regulation it's very interesting to note this fact that uh, in india we don't have any personal protection data bill but a committee was uh, created uh, to to regulate this non personal data non personal data should be used for the whole society like uh, traffic data collection if you are collecting traffic data uh, and then using it uh, to inform people about uh, peaks and lows and uh, you know the th- streets that are going to be busy then this will help people if you if you if you are collecting data and using it for uh, uh let's say ecological development or protection or conservation then this sort of non personal data is beneficial for the whole society but the problem is that uh, this uh, this nd npd that is non personal data committee it uh, released a, a governance framework and it has handed over its report basically and you find that there are so many issues with it the first thing is data principles now who or which can be data principles individuals companies and communities can become data principles uh, the role as well as the rights of individuals and companies in the context of data governance are well understood however the idea of communities as data principles is introduced ambiguously by the report uh, while it provides examples of what might constitute a community example citizen groups in neighborhoods uh, there is little clarity on the rights and functions of the community so community okay we know what community is but uh, what about their rights and functions nothing is said there next are data custodians custodians like uh, uh, the people who collect store process or use data and uh, this custodians right uh, they play a very important role but the thing is the problem is rules and regulations about custodian is also very fuzzy as well as uh, th- the most shocking thing is they can use this data to monetize they can monetize the data that means they can make money out of this data so how they are going to use for the benefit of non personal data how they how we are going to use it for the benefit of our society based on current uh, literature data custodians can be interpreted as data stewards imagined in many cases as independent entities that intermediate with technological companies on behalf of communities which they represent uh, then we have trustees data trustees uh, governments uh, citizen groups or universities again relationship is not clear here so the bottom line is that when it comes to non personal data we have to be very clear uh, about its usage ownership uh, who is going to use it and how much if you make money then how you are going to distribute it and we need to take more custodians we need to take more stakeholders on board if you just take people who are of course they are expert but if they don't know ground reality then they are of no use so take some users on board you know universities then users so many people you can take them on board and then make necessary changes with this recommendations india idea summit this is going to be 45th anniversary of uh, this council usa india business council and um, two day summit is going to take place so prime minister modi is going to address this uh, india idea summit uh, today and this is about india and usa's business relationship very important thing uh, finance minister nirmala sitaraman ji she addressed this uh, us india business council yesterday she talked about uh, reforms uh, structural reforms and uh, piyush goel uh, he talked about this uh, india's uh, target as well as aim uh, to be a reliable business partner of the world n95 masks not that reliable not that good has been said by union health minister national clinical grounds on covid-19 a program started by aims delhi with uh, union health ministry and niti ayog amarnath yatra is going to uh, be cancelled for the first time in 150 years in bihar flood situation has further deteriorated in gandak river i want you guys to locate this river in your class book zero survey shows 23% may have a covid positive in delhi Uh, vaccinating india will take at least 2 years and uh, we have this amazing story of jeff bezos he added 13 cor- uh, 13 billion dollars uh, to wealth in just one day and that's everything in today's discussion thank you very much god bless you all jai hind